Welcome to our daily Bible devotional. Today is Monday, June 8th, 2020, and I hope that uh, you're off to a good start this work week. We uh, praise the Lord for the services we had yesterday, Sunday morning, and for the first time in about three months, a Sunday evening service. And uh, it was just a blessing to be together on Sunday night. The choir and orchestra, orchestra uh, played yesterday and sang, and it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful to hear them again. And we praise the Lord. Look forward to this Sunday uh, doing the same thing. I want to wish happy birthday. Some folks had a birthday over the weekend. And uh, a couple of folks today, uh, June 7th on Sunday, yesterday, Mrs. Vicki Barefoot, and Micah Richardson, Mrs. Lisa Sharp, uh, Mrs. Dorothy Biggs, and Mrs. Emily Wistrand. And I hope that you all had a great birthday on your uh, yesterday. And then uh, today, Mrs. Laura Owens. Laura, God bless you, and happy birthday to you and Emma Scruggs. I also want to wish a happy anniversary to one of our staff members and his wife, Dennis and Janet Beam. Uh, today is their anniversary. I don't know how many years it's been, didn't ask them, but uh, Dennis and Janet have been here for, I think, about close to 30 years in our ministry. And uh, we just praise the Lord for them and their children, and what a blessing they've been all these years. Well, Wednesday night, our prayer and Bible study is still going to be online this week. We hope maybe by the 17th on the Wednesday we'll be able to gather together again for that. But uh, this Wednesday will be online. Dr. David Blazer will be our uh, Bible uh, teacher for Wednesday night. Well, if you have a Bible with you, or if you can get to one, open it up to uh, Mark chapter 10, <clears throat> the Gospel of Mark chapter 10. I want to read several verses here and then I gave you a challenge today from God's Word. In verse number 17, Mark 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. One day Jesus was doing his ministry here on this earth, and as it often happened, many folks would come up to him and ask him questions, sometimes for healing and other things. And this man, a young man, the Bible says he was wealthy, he came to Jesus with a very sincere question. He, he bowed on his knees to the Lord and he said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? What a great question. Uh, he wanted to know, how can I live forever in heaven with God? And the great thing is that he was asking the right person. He was asking God himself. And so Jesus responded to him in a way I don't think this man expected. When Jesus told him, well, you know the law, keep the law, keep the commandments and so forth. And the man said, I've done all these things. And then Jesus said, then go sell everything that you have and give it out to those who need it and then come and follow me. This didn't set right with this man. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he walked away with a sad heart. I believe it was very sincere about wanting to know how to be saved, wanting to know how to get to heaven. But there's this man's problem. He wanted the true God, but he also had a problem with the false gods of this world, money and possessions. Was Jesus teaching that um, we can buy our way into heaven? No. Jesus was reaching this man's heart. He knew what was in this man's heart. This man's God was his money and his possessions. And Jesus was trying to get him to give up this false God and to seek and serve the only true God because that's the only way you're going to heaven is through the Lord. You know, it's a good thing today to <clears throat> have money and things that money can buy as long as you don't lose the things that money cannot buy. And like this particular man, what, what good would it do for you to have all the money you could ever wish 
and still go to hell. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And Jesus also said in the Sermon on the Mount, in, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, he said, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one <clears throat> and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and, God and mammon. And so mammon there is referring to wealth and, and um, possessions and material things. And so you have to come to a, a place in the, your life where you realize that there's only room for one God in your life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And for a child of God, a reminder to us that spiritual blessings today are more important than material gain. Now, thank God for material gain, and <clears throat> we thank God for all of those things, but just because we have a lot of things doesn't mean that God is pleased with our lives. Whose kingdom are we seeking? Our kingdom or the kingdom of God? In Matthew 6, 33, <clears throat> same Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In Psalm 62, verse 10, in the latter part of that verse says, If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. And so today, uh, it's a blessing to have things, and money, and possessions, and we have been blessed to live in this prosperous country of America. Make sure that although you may have things, that things don't have you. Let's make sure that we live for God and that He's the only God we have in the throne of our lives. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Word of God again and, and how you teach us daily about life and the things that we, Lord, encounter in life and possessions and money and so forth. And thank you, Lord, for the comforts of life and the provisions of life. You know what we need to make it through this life, and we thank you for it. But Lord, may we not fall prey to the temptation to seek those things first as if they're the most important thing. They're not. And Lord, we can live without those things, but we can't live without you. We certainly can't live eternally without you. And so, Lord, may we keep things in the right perspective. May we uh, thank you for the blessings you give to us. May we always put you first and keep you on the throne of our lives. Bless God's people today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Monday.